you know, those those miles can get really long and lonely. So having a plan and a, a training partner really helps. Some sort of support staff um, and just go out there with intent. Um, definitely want to have a plan that you're following to it, make it make it all work. You know. One of the things about having a training plan, and most of them out there, you know, there's science behind it, and there's, you know, it's based on, you know, numbers and experience by other people. I mean, Charlie obviously has done this a lot, and he's, he, you know, he had a lot of charts and graphs to show us why his plan is the best plan. And so there's a lot of thought that went into it, and you have to follow a plan and be consistent in order to make it through a run as long as 26. I might blank it out. Point 22. Point two miles. <laughs> and so that's where having a plan that's been well thought out, has experience behind it, where other people have run it and finished the marathon happy, healthy, with a faster time, is so important. And then I want to echo what Karen said, that running with another individual or two or a group makes those miles go by a little bit faster. Because when you're out there on your own, it can, it can be a little bit tougher. Some people love to run alone, but for the most part, when I've met people, they like to have the little social aspect of getting out there and getting the miles with other people. Brad. I would, I would add, yeah, I would concur. A training partner is huge. I tried to self-train in 2006 for CIM and didn't really have a plan did not have a partner and it really did not go well. I was I was making it up as I went along. Just and somebody had said, well if you can run 20 miles, you can run 26. So I tried to run 20 and it was pretty much a disaster. Um, my friends encouraged me to try one more time. It didn't go well and I just pulled the plug. Um, when I connected with Fleet Feet and I met people that had the same goal, it was huge. Those partners they hold you accountable. They pick you up on days when you're not feeling it. Um, and if you find the good ones, when you're training for something specific, like when I was trying to qualify for Boston, I had a friend who ran with me on ridiculously hot afternoons so that I could, I could do my workout. And that was important because I wouldn't have finished those workouts without, my, without a partner. So <clears throat> definitely find a schedule because you really don't want to try and wander through this on your own. Because um, you either won't finish it or you'll get hurt. Um, and yeah, and without a partner, it's, it's, I think it's easier to give up. I would say that uh, probably the biggest thing that a structured training plan gives you is um, a way to give, make sure that you create a routine. So if you know that every Sunday you're supposed to run long, if you know that every Wednesday you're doing some sort of speed workout, you don't have to think about it. You just kind of know that on those days that's what you're going to get done. And when you add those different components to your week, that adds a lot of different varieties so it doesn't become stale. Um, and the other thing too is that if, if you don't have to really think about it, you can get those runs in every single day or you know the three or four times a week and you can maintain the consistency that you need. Um, Chris talked a lot about my charts and graphs and stuff like that. Um, all the training really is is, is you're kind of like baking a cake, you know, and, and you want to put it all, all the ingredients the right way. And so if you know that on certain days you're supposed to add those ingredients and you just repeat over and over, you're going to get the result that you want.